Hello everybody and welcome back to Promise Gaming and more Plague Inc. Evolved custom scenarios. I had a scenario lined up, but then I realized it is basically all about a Russian YouTuber I know nothing about called The Happy Wolf, so we're gonna look for something else on the popular tab instead today. Let's try the scenario When Day Breaks. Now I think we've already done something kind of similar to this. This is an SCP-based scenario that seems sort of familiar. But as far as I can tell, I haven't actually done this specific one before, so we're going to give it a go. When Day Breaks is an SCP, however, in this scenario, I veer from the SCP universe and make a disease out of it. Symptoms are similar to the SCPs. This is my first scenario. Criticism is very welcome. I like your attitude, squash head. Just change your name. Your, your name is silly. That's not a very good criticism. I'm sorry. I'm just poking fun. Virus. ATP boost, Darwinist, Oxide Extreme File, and Symptostasis. Normal difficulty. WDB, when day breaks, zero, zero, 001. This is the end. When day breaks has been accidentally let out during testing. Criticism is welcome. Also, I know it sucks. That's just self deprecation. This is not criticism at all. Or if it is, it's not very fair criticism. I'll tell you if it sucks. Hopefully, it doesn't. We have birds. We have insects. We have meat from slaughtered animals that can be ingested. We have blood. Gives organism ability to spread through blood-to-blood -blood contact. Water and air. Alright, a lot of this is fairly standard, but reorganized, and I don't think meat is typical. Insects is a little bit different there. We have nausea. We have coughing, headache, and UV burn, sunburn. Skin is weakened from pathogen, causing sensitivity to UV rays, increasing the infectivity. Alright, sure, let's pick that one up. That seems pretty good. Cysts! I like cysts. Let's go for cysts. And then we have boules. Large blisters form from burns due to sensitive skin, significantly increasing infectivity for 10 points. With that much infectivity and a reasonable amount of severity? Oh, heck yeah, that's what I'm going for. That's what I'm talking about. That's really good. It's debatably a little unbalanced, but hey, criticism is welcome, he said. So I'm gonna... Or she, I have no idea. So I'm going to go for a critical route and try to make the scenario better and give my feedback. This might be a little overpowered for 10 DNA with symptostasis. Serum sweat. Skin begins overproducing serum, which can lead to dehydration. Serum runs off body in a sweat-like manner, increasing infectivity greatly. Serum? Serum leaking from your skin. That's slightly horrifying. Uh, drug resistance, genetic reshuffle, heat resistance, genetic hardening, cold resistance, and viral instability. It's all the normal stuff. It Just don't be fooled. It's been rearranged. This is not quite as creative as you'd like to think it is. Even so. Uh, let's go for the coughing and the nausea. Just get a little extra infectivity since these are all relatively cheap. Bronchitis. Phlegm, which I think is misspelled. Contains pathogen and spreads much easier when coughing. Coughing is also more frequent and causes more infection. Also very infective for only 10 DNA and a pretty reasonable amount of severity. This is a golden pickup right there. Vomiting. Pathogen causes ejection of infected stomach contents, causing it to spread. Vomit is gross. I don't like throwing up. Although I sometimes do. Not okay. Hang on. I sometimes like to throw up. Not in the sense that I want to inf uh, I want to uh, induce vomiting. I'm not that kind of person. But when you feel really, really sick and you had something and you're pretty sure you got horrible food poisoning that your wife probably gave you because she didn't cook the shellfish all the way through, um, you feel really good when you finish throwing up by the end. Sometimes it's great, and sometimes it's just miserable and it never stops. I've had that happen too. You guys may recall a very brief little, uh, little. S post kind of video I created a while back when I was just way too tired because uh, I had been vomiting for hours upon hours. It was a bad time to try recording something. It was a pretty funny video though. PMGR pulmonary manifestations of gastroesophageal vagal reflux. This is okay, caused by accidental inhalation of vomit. Ah! Infective, severe, and can be lethal. No freaking kidding! It can be lethal. Holy crap! That's a lot for only 16 DNA. Stomach ulcers. Pathogen attacks the stomach walls, causing weakened tissue and stomach acid to burn said tissue. Lethal and severe. Actually appropriate, yes. Stomach ulcers are pretty severe, indeed. Um, if your stomach acid leaks out of your stomach, your internal organs are going to have a real freaking bad time, and the acids slowly dissolve you from the inside out. Sort of. Uh, kind of. Anyway, insects, uh, birds. Let's go ahead and grab some birds. I want to get a little bit of extra transmission vector, so it looks like with this much infectivity, we should be able to get around pretty well, so I think top priority is going to be getting a bit more water transmission. We've got a reasonable amount of severity here, so I'm getting plenty of DNA points from our red and orange bubbles. PMGR, whoa, gosh, no, 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 
no. Get freaking rid of that. I'm a little bit worried mutation chance is going to sink me if I'm not careful. I may actually get rid of that before anybody died. I'm practically a hero as I try to destroy the Earth. Uh, let's go for some Water 2 and then some Air 2 and we'll go for Extreme Bio Aerosol. Okay. Saudi Arabia starts to work on the cure. Well, glad somebody's being proactive about it. It's great. Let's go for that Extreme Bio Aerosol. With this much infectivity, and I mean like maxed out, plus the ability to get on boats, no problem. Ah, uh, we should be spreading really fast. Definitely if we get some cold resistance, maybe a couple levels of that, that should be fine. I don't even know if I need drug resistance, to be honest. We're going to spread just fine in the wealthy countries, probably. Mostly I want to make sure that we get boats into Greenland before this whole thing shuts down on me. We'll pick up a level of drug resistance just to speed it up, I suppose. Uh, headache. Causes headaches, she can cause insomnia, which impacts cure research. Okay, we'll pick that up, it's cheap. Migraine. Severe headaches caused by bruising of the brain tissue. Impairs daily routines and impacts research. Again, slowing down a cure that so far is not that much of a problem, despite the fact that, you know, almost 3 billion people are suffering some rather severe symptoms here. But don't ask them, there's a stomach ulcers. Hold up. Get rid of that. Nope, nope, nope. No stress ulcers. You know, there have been a couple of times when I've been worried that I'm developing a stomach ulcer just from sheer stress. Turns out working 70 hours a week between my regular job and between YouTube, not especially good for the health. I know, who would have thunk? I'm going to go for some more bird transmission since we seem to be having a little bit of trouble getting around into Canada. I will grab some meat as well, and then I'm going to hold on to the rest of my DNA because I want to get some really crazy lethality. There's the stomach ulcers again. No! No! Go away! Got into Canada and Iceland and Sweden. That's good. Just missing Philippines and New Guinea. Well, there's New Guinea, and there's the Philippines. Perfect! All right, do we have any necrosis? I don't think so. Let's slow down the cure with a migraine and an aneurysm. Bruises in the brain can bleed, causing aneurysms. Is that what an aneurysm comes from? Does it come from a bruise in the brain? And a little brain bleed? You know, for some reason I always thought that an aneurysm had something to do with a blood clot getting uh, in, stuck in the veins of your brain. And that could kill you, but maybe that has more to do with a stroke. I don't really know. Vitreous hemorrhage. Attack of the sinuses causes eyes to bleed. Very severe and impacts research. Can be lethal due to the blood loss. Yes. Zero DNA, so it's extremely cost-effective. That is to say, it's free. PMGR, uh, I mean, do we really want this much lethality this early on? The answer is no. Not particularly. I'm gonna grab a level of heat resistance just so we can spread faster. Freaking... Stop it! Stop it! I want to spread a little faster in the Philippines and New Guinea to make sure... Okay, okay fine, you can have your way. I want to make sure that we can spread faster and get um, through New Guinea and the Philippines, but... We seem to be struggling on that front, so okay, more heat resistance. And then environmental hardening. We're just going to max out any resistances and try to really speed things up. There we go. So New Guinea is definitely hitting critical mass. Philippines are getting there too. How's Canada? Canada is holding out surprisingly well, considering. Sea abilities? What? Sea abilities, hang on. You unlocked something. Ooh, I got a present. What did I get? It's when day breaks, the sun rises, and the infected begin to liquefy. The end of the world ensues. 35 DNA, you say? There's the stomach ulcers. All right, Canada's about to be fully infected. Cool. Day breaks. All the world just plops over dead. Yes. There are no healthy people left in the world. Boom. That's some pretty serious lethality. That's a lot of damage. I'm going to grab some genetic reshuffles and just buy myself a tiny bit of score since we're at the very end. WDB001 to destroy humanity. Ba boom! Successfully eliminated all life on Earth. 247 days, 1% cure progress, 107,485 points. Also, a very easy scenario, ultimately. Um, I'm trying to think back a little bit here. It, it, did, it did spread pretty aggressively. I think, honestly, the biggest issue is that some of the early symptoms are a little bit too strong for too cheap of a cost. And the result is you can really ramp up that uh, that infectivity extremely early on and get around and just... Yeah, no, it, we, just, we just got around too fast. Too much infectivity too early on, I think, especially with the symptostasis. I would say mutation chance felt a little bit high. Definitely way too many opportunities to get absurd amounts of lethality. I would actually just add more symptoms in and kind of draw the experience out a little bit. Maybe make things a teensy bit cheaper, but then add in like two or three more steps before you can get that much infectivity from a single symptom. I don't know. That would be my guess. Um, the other... 
Couple problems I would say was with the scenario is one, there's not actually that much customization. Uh, transmissions have a little bit with the meat, but otherwise it's mostly the same, just rearranged. Abilities are basically the same, but rearranged. Symptoms at least do have some customization in how they are done, and that's that's good. I appreciate that. So you just need more of that in a scenario in general, I would say. And then the other big problem is I kind of forgot, like, until a 70 or 80 percent of the way through, that this was an SCP scenario. I just totally forgot that that was a thing. I know it's been like 10 minutes, but I forgot about it because it didn't really impact the scenario in any way. So I would really embrace the theme, you know? Draw it out a little bit more, right? So there's more to do and it doesn't ramp up too quickly and also inject more of the story. I'll give you a thumbs up as an encouragement, but uh, I think the scenario could use a bit of work. But those, those would be my recommendations. Best of luck to you. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If so, then I'd ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.